Hello everyone. So today in this session we will be discussing about functions in Python. How to design a function in Python, what are the inbuilt functions available in Python library, all those things we will be discussing. To start with, first we have to understand what is a function. Function is nothing but a block of code or set of instructions. When you are using the same code multiple times or when you are doing the same task again and again, you don't have to write the same code repeatedly. Instead of that, you can write that code in a function and whenever you want to use that uh, code or whenever you want to do some operation which, is, uh, which has to be done repeatedly, you can use functions for it. And in Python, the general syntax for function call is specifying the function name followed by the arguments list within brackets which are separated by commas. So this is called as the general syntax or general function call syntax. So let us see some of the built-in functions in Python. Built-in functions means functions which are already defined by Python to do some specific task. So this is one of the function where we have a function abs which is used to display the absolute value of a number. Absolute value of a number. This function will display the absolute value means this uh, function will ignore the sign of the number. As you can see here, abs of minus 9. When you are sending minus 9 as parameter, the resultant you are getting is 9. But whereas uh, if it's float, the value remains same. Let us have a look at one more example of this abs function. Here you can see an example where and this I am assigning the value of 3 to day temperature variable and value 10 to night temperature variable. So now day temperature is 3, night temperature is 12 and I want to find the difference in the temperature. So I am using absolute because I want to find the difference. This difference value I don't want to name it as negative or positive. So I am using absolute function. So day temperature minus night temperature that is 3 minus 10 the value will be sub, minus 7 but the uh, resultant which I am getting here is 7. This is because absolute value converts the number to its positive value. Moving on, uh, whenever we are using a function we are using a function uh, call to execute the function task. So there are certain rules we need to keep in mind while executing a function call. First thing evaluate each argument at a time working from left to right. That is if your function contains two arguments you have to evaluate each argument from left to right then pass the resulting values into the function, execute the function. When the function call finishes, it produces a value as a re result or the return value. So these are the rules for executing a function call. Let us see one example for this. Function calls can also be used in expressions. As you can see here, see here it is absolute value of minus 7 plus absolute value of 3.3. .3. So this is one function call and this is another function call. This both together are used as part of an expression which contains an arithmetic operator in it. So absolute value of minus 7 is 7. Absolute value of 3.3 .3 remains the same. So 7 plus 3.3 .3, we are getting 10.3. Similarly Functions can also be used as arguments to other functions. That is, 
powers of absolute value of minus 2 comma round of 4.3 so absolute function what it will do it will convert the value to positive so power of 2 comma round of 4.3 means when I round off this value my result will be 4 4.3 is less than 4.5 so the value I am getting is floor of the number which is 4 so power of 2 comma 4 is 2 exponentiation 4 that is 2 power 4 I am getting the result 16 here you can see uh, an example where it is clearly given um, how this expression is evaluated in the first step absolute value of minus 2 is done that is the first step which is converted into 2 then round 1 2 okay this is the first step second step then the third step is 4.3 this is stored in a memory location in the computer memory model and then round of 4.3 is 4 so now we have 2 comma 4 then evaluate the fifth step is evaluate the expression for power of that is power of 2 comma 4 and we are here with a result of 16 moving on here is a list of some of the most used built-in functions in python int is used to convert any value to integer value any number to integer value but you can only give number as input if you are trying to give a character value as input this will throw an error similarly float is used to convert number into its equivalent floating point value that is it will add a zero after a decimal number and this is one of the important function available in python help of the parameter you can send any of the built-in functions when you send any of the built-in function name help function will let you uh, know the exact usage of that function why that function is used as you can see here absolute x so this means it returns the absolute value of the argument which you are sending Similarly, we have round function which is used to round off the value to its equal, uh, its uh, nearest integer that is round of 3.8, 3.8 means which is more than 3.5. So, the value will be to uh, round off to the next number which is 4. Here 3.3 is less than 3.5. So, it will round off to 3. Similarly, 3 point minus 3.3 .3, which is a negative number which will uh, round off to minus 3 whereas minus 3.5 will round off to minus 4 you can uh, give help for even round function and see how that works it will give all the details about the function similarly the power function which is used to calculate the uh, exponentiation value of a number like power 2 comma 4 months 2 exponentiation 4 or 2 power 4 with this 2 power 4 you can also use the third uh, argument you can also send the third argument in the power function as you can see here base exponentiation and then mode this uh, is a special value which you can send as a third argument which will evaluate the mod operator that is modulus operator so here what is being done is 2 power 4 it will calculate which is 16 it will do modulus operation of 2 power 4 with 3 16 modulus 3 will be done and when we uh, do 16 modulus 3 the rem 3 5s are 15 it is so the reminder is 1 that is what we are getting here Then memory addresses how python keeps track of values so in the previous session i mentioned how uh, python stores the value in its memory like computer memory model we discussed 
so here i can tell you uh, we can even keep track of that memory addresses how can we do it with the help of id id is a method or the function which is used to uh, check the memory address of any value which is storing so here see id of minus 9 minus 9 is the integer value which i'm giving as input so whenever i am using any integer float or variable whether it's a literal or a variable or a character or a string everything will occupy a space in computer memory even though if you are uh, storing it in a variable or not it will occupy a space when you are storing that value in a variable means that variable name is referring to that memory address otherwise also that value will be stored in a memory so here i am giving id of minus 9 minus 9 is a literal so it is giving me the address where this minus 9 is stored in computer memory similarly when you run this instruction on your system this may give you a different value but one thing which we have to keep in mind is all the values which you are getting as output for id will be unique like if you're giving id of minus 9 and if uh, again you're giving id of some other value you will not get the same value as output that is same memory address cannot be allocated to uh, different literals or different variables this is with respect to literal I, I have given one example with respect to integer and also with float here you can see shoe size is equal to 8.5 I am creating a variable shoe size and assigning the value 8.5 then when I give id of shoe size this is showing the address of shoe size that is a variable 8.5 is different it's stored in some other memory location where uh, whereas this shoe size is a variable which is stored in this memory location which is referring to 8.5 similarly fahrenheit is equal to 77.7 .7. so if i'm uh, trying to identify the address of fahrenheit this is the address of the variable similarly when we define function function will also hold memory uh, so you can give id abs which is absolute is a function so for that it is showing the memory address where that function is stored similarly for round it is showing some address how can we create our own function till now we have discussed what are the available python built-in functions but now if I want to create my own function and use it, I have to follow this structure. This is the syntax of creating my own function in Python. DEF, that means define, which is a keyword. I'm using DEF as it is. Then I have to give function name, then parameter list separated by comma, and that has to be enclosed within braces then this colon this colon should not be uh, ignored you have to remember to put this colon and after def defining the actual block that is the body of the function should be defined let us see one example here let us see an example here see if i want to convert the temperature value from fahrenheit to celsius i have to apply the formula fahrenheit value minus 32 into 5 by 9 so if I, in my program i want this calculation to be done multiple times instead of writing this formula multiple times what i can do is i can put everything in a function and i can just call that function just like convert to celsius is my function name if i assume and by sending the value of temperature in fahrenheit i should get the value of celsius in written that would be easy but if i just run this will it work no it is showing there is no function defined with this name convert to celsius so what i have to do define the function that is define convert to celsius and 
the value which I'm sending is as parameter is Fahrenheit colon don't forget this colon this is very important then in the next line once you give colon the next line starts with an indent that is the space in the beginning after this only uh, you have to start at least a tab space should be there then return Fahrenheit minus 32 into 5 by 9 which is the formula to convert temperature in Fahrenheit to Celsius so what is being done here I'm creating a function to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius when I send the value of Fahrenheit as parameter I will be getting the resultant value as Celsius but this does not do any conversation uh, conversion I'm sorry this does not do any conversion until I call this function just creating the function is not enough I have to call this when I want to want this function to do something so I have to try calling it the name of the function as you can see here convert to Celsius and then I have to send parameter Fahrenheit so I'm calling convert to Celsius and the value I'm sending is 80 so it is converting 80 minus 32 into 5 by 9 and I'm getting the result here this is how we have to call the function and how this executes internally how this functions internally so here as you can see I'm defining the function this is the function definition this is the function body which has a return statement here then this is the function call convert to Celsius of 80 is the parameter which I'm sending that is the temperature in Fahrenheit so how what happens when the Python interpreter comes across this statement when the interpreter says define convert to Celsius function it will make a note of this function there is a function at this particular line and which is stored in so and so memory location then later it skips the statement or the block of code it will directly go to the next instruction where I'm having a function call when I call this function the control will go to this the body of this definition function definition it will execute the number of statements like if there are there is one statement here in this case it will execute it if there are multiple statements it will execute that block of code or block of statements then it will come back to the next line after this function call I hope it's uh, easy to follow so moving on we have to keep in mind one thing when uh, creating any function the first thing is you can't have two functions with the same name that is an error when you're creating a function and for the second time when you want when you try to create a new function with the same name the previously created function will be replaced or the previously created function will be deleted automatically and the new function will takes its place let us take one example here of creating a function passing multiple values as parameters and how that can be evaluated so for that I am creating evaluation of quadrating equation so here I am defining a function def that is the keyword define quadratic is the function name a b c and x are the parameters which I am passing and the quadratic equation should be ax squared plus bx plus c so I am sending the value a b c and x as parameters so whenever I am calling this function I will be sending four parameters which are the values of a b c and x respectively and what I am doing within this function I am creating three local variables local variables are the variables which are defined within the function and can be accessed only within the function so 
I'm assigning the value first equals a into x power 2 that is a x square second is equal to b into x that is b x third is equal to c but to evaluate the quadratic equation I have to evaluate the equation a x square plus b x plus c that is first plus second plus third that is what I am doing in the return statement. Return first plus second plus third. First is ax square, second is bx and third is c. Now when I call the function with values 2, 3, 4 and 0 0.5, a will be 2, x will be 0 0.5, b will be 3, x will be 0 0.5, c will be 4. And you can apply these values to this and evaluate. You will obviously get the value, resultant value as 6.0. Similarly, for this value 2, 3, 4 and 1.5, you will get 13.0. This is one simple illustration of uh, creating a function and also using local variables. After this, if you try to access first, second and third outside this uh, class definition it you cannot access it it shows it does not exist there is an uh, it will show the name error the variable with this name does not exist let us take one example and see how these functions are stored in computer memory model in the previous session we discussed how the literals or strings or uh, any variables are stored in computer memory model so here we will look at a function we'll create a simple function and then see how that is stored in computer memory model so let us consider this function define f of x f is the name of the function x is the parameter which i'm sending to the function and what this function is doing calculate the x value multiply it by 2 and store the result in x get the x value as parameter multiply it by 2 store the result in x so now x is having double the value which has been sent as parameter and result send the result back as return value so what is being done if i'm sending 1 i will i'll be getting 2 as return value if i'm sending 2 i'll be getting 4 any value which you're sending as parameter here you are getting double the value as return statement so here what i'm doing x is equal to 1 then i am calculating f of x plus 1 plus f of x plus 2 let us see when i'm sending f of x plus 1 x is 1 1 plus 1 is f of 2. When I am sending 2, my return value will be 4. So this will store 4. And f of x plus 2 is x is equal to 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3. When I am sending 3 as parameter, my return value is 6. So 4 plus 6, 10. My resultant value at the end of this statement, after executing this statement, value of x should be 10. But how computer handles it? When I am defining this function f of x, f of x is stored in a memory location. Let's say id 1. These are the shell uh, frames. Frames means uh, the namespaces uh, which we use. That is the variable names and all will be uh, explained to the left hand side which is in frames. And the memory location is represented as objects which is in which is on the right hand side. So let us see here when I define a function f of with parameter x. So this f function is referring to id1 which is having f of x as an object. Whenever I define a function, the function object will be created. That is in the memory location id1 and it is of the type function. 
f is referring to id 1. So, I just told you about how f of x object is created. Now, let us see how this x is equal to 1 is stored. When I am saying x equals 1, the 1 value is assigned to x. 1 is stored in a memory location as we discussed in the previous session as well. 1 is a literal which is stored in a memory location. Let us say it is id2 of type int. So, x is referring to id2. f is referring to f is the function which is referring to id1 which is a function object. Then x is referring to id2 which is a integer object. Then let us go to the next expression. As I told you after defining it will not go to the body of the function. It will go to the next statement after the function uh, part. Then x, x equals 1 then x equals f of x plus 1 plus f of x plus 2. Here I am calling this function f twice f of x plus 1 is one function call, f of x plus 2 is another function call. So, f of x plus 1, let us evaluate one after the other. And we have to start evaluating to the right hand side of the assignment operator and then assign the value to the element which is on the left hand side. So, first let us look at f of x plus 1. So, until this where f is referring to id1, x is referring to id2 which is 1. We know now f of x plus 1. So, x plus 1 is calculated. Now, x is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 which x plus 1 is stored in a memory location which is considered as an object. id3 is the location of type integer. So, f of 2 has to be calculated. So, x is 2 sorry f of x so it is uh, shown in a different frame f of x is id 3 is referring to id 3 then here you can see when I am sending this value 2 to the function I will be getting 2 into 2 which is 4 so that 4 the return value is stored as another object which is uh, referred to as id4 of type int and x is now referring to id4. So, f of x, f of x plus 1, f of 1 plus 1 which we are getting the result as 4 is stored in id4. So, f of x is pointing to id4 now. Now, let us move on to the next express next uh, element in the expression so we found out what is f of x plus 1 now we will have to look at f of x plus 2 so first calculate x plus 2 x plus 2 means x equals 1 1 plus 2 is 3 3 is stored as an object integer object of uh, it's stored in uh, memory address id5 and f of x is referring to 3. When this 3 is sent as parameter to the function f, the resultant will be 3 into 2 which is 6 which is the return value which is stored in the address id6. So, f of x is referring to this. So, f of the return value is referring to 6. So, f of x plus 1 is referring to id4, f of x plus 2 is referring to id5, sorry id6 here, so id4 plus id6. Here you can see id4 plus id6 that is 4 plus 6, this expression is evaluated and the resultant is stored in a new variable id7 of type integer. And the resultant value is 4 plus 6 which is 10. And f of x is referring to this id7 at the end of the evaluation. So, when I run this code, define f of x function, 
then x equals 1, x equals f of x plus 1 plus f of x plus 2. After executing these statements, value of x should be 10. You can cross verify it. This is the pictorial representation of how uh, these variables, function and other objects are stored internally in computer memory. Let us take some example and discuss how we can do some numeric calculations by using functions. So let us consider an example. Here this function is created to calculate the difference between two days. Let's say, uh, let's consider the number of days in the year is calculated as the days from 1 to 365 as day numbers. And I want to calculate the difference between 4th day and 24th day. Or I want to calculate the difference between 10th day and 100th day. That uh, difference we are calculating here by sending two values as parameters day 1 and day 2 and calculate the difference between two days. So I am defining a function defined days difference is the name of the function. Day 1 and day 2 are the parameters which I am sending. Whatever I have here in green color is document string or doc string which can be considered as multi-line comment. This is usually ignored uh, by the Python interpreter as we are not storing it in any variable or uh, anything. But why I am using it is uh, here I have defined how this function works. So int comma int the resultant is int. That means I am sending two uh, integer values as parameters as arguments and I am getting the resultant in the form of integer. That is the return value. I am sending this integer value back as result. Then what this function is doing is return the number of days between day 1 and day 2. And I have also given uh, some of the example of how it works and how to call this. When you want to call this days difference, days difference, the function name, send two parameters, 200, 224. It will show you the difference uh, between the two days is 24. Similarly, if you are sending the same number, 50, if you are sending different numbers, it will show you the difference in integer value. And what this function will do is, it will return day 2 minus day 1. This is very simple. Uh, let us see some more example and uh, see how this can be implemented in uh, other calculations as well. So, using this function days difference, we calculate diff calculated the difference between two days. Moving on, let us consider one more example here. I want to calculate which day of the week my birthday will fall. So I am assuming these values for days of the week. If it's Sunday 1, Monday 2, Tuesday 3, likewise Saturday it's 7. Assuming today is let's say third day of the year and third day of the year is Thursday. So third day of the year is Thursday means number 5. Then what will be the day on my birthday? So I want to calculate the number, uh, the day number of my birthday and I will have to calculate this. So for that first, let me calculate which day it is. So for that, I am creating a function get weekday, current weekday and days ahead. So I am calculating current weekday which is let's say current day is uh, 5 or 3 or any value you give. Today is uh, Tuesday then you can give 3 plus days ahead minus 1. This is uh, this minus 1 and plus 1 is used to uh, moderate the value when we are using the modulus operator. You can ignore this current weekday plus how many days ahead you want to calculate that is after 20 days will it be uh, which uh, which day of the week it will be so current weekday is 
3 plus after 20 days what will be the day that it is being calculated by uh, applying modulus operator of 7 so get weekday I am given today is 3 which is Tuesday after one day what it will be it will be 4 similarly today is 7 Saturday after one day what it will be 0 this minus 1 and plus 1 I am using here to ignore the values of 0 uh, whenever we come across this calculation <coughs> when you do the modulus operation on uh, 7 either you will get 0 or 1 2 3 up to 7 so to ignore the value of 0 I am using this minus 1 here and plus 1 here so now we calculated how to calculate the day of the week uh, like given the current day and the uh, number of days after it days ahead it now I want to calculate what my birthday is on so how that have to be done what I'm doing is previously we discussed two functions days difference get weekday so I'm using this both the functions how I am using to, fi uh, to find my, the day on my birthday I'm sending current weekday let's say it's Tuesday means 3 Sunday means 1 like that which day it is and current today and my birthday like current today let's say it's day 1 or that is January 1 my birthday is on January 5th then I'll be sending 5 then find the days difference days difference is current day to birthday how many days difference is there between these two days then calculate which week from current weekday ahead of the days difference this will get you what is the day on your birthday so if I'm uh, saying current weekday is pi which is Thursday and uh, current day is 3 that means 3rd of January and my birthday is 4th of January so if it's Thursday today then tomorrow what it will be it's Friday that is 6 similarly you can calculate for even the larger numbers so the, these examples I just took to explain how we can use functions to do numeric calculations these are some of the important terminologies in functions like function definition what this function definition will do when you are uh, referring to a new variable whenever you are creating a function that will create a function object in the computer memory and python will refer to that function object whenever you call the function then return statement in the function is used to describe what will be the result parameter is a variable which appears between the parentheses of the function header that is the, val uh, the value you are sending to the function will be considered as a variable uh, local variable to that function that is called as parameter then the local variable is a variable that, that is used in a function definition you are creating a variable inside the function then it is called as a local variable then function call is the uh, statement which you use to execute that function argument is the expression which you are sending in the function call then whenever you want to explain anything like if your function doesn't work for a particular set of value or if your function doesn't work for some um, values like negative values it doesn't work or anything that you can uh, always mention under the comments so that the other other people who will be using your program will be understanding it before making the function call here is a complete set of python keywords these are uh, the reserved words that means these words cannot be used as variable name or function name or anything it has its own predefined meaning and it has to be used in that context only and is a keyword let's say uh, for example 
and is used to perform logical and operation. You cannot use this to perform any other op operation. And we have already discussed depth. Depth means define, uh, which is used to define functions. So we cannot use this word in any other context. So they are, these are called as keywords and we have to use these words in its predefined context only. And as I mentioned in my previous uh, session as well, this is the book which I'm referring to explain the concepts in the Python. Most of the examples are taken from this book only. Uh, this is a very uh, good one, which is easy to read, easy to understand and learn. Please do the, go and uh, have a look at the book. There are some uh, practice exercises available with this, with each chapter of this book, which is, uh, which makes your learning quite easy and uh, you will enjoy learning. Thank you for watching.